Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crashy, and today I have an interesting idea. So I thought of Nerd Slayer Studios YouTube channel um, doing the series The Death of a Game, and I realized I don't, I didn't really pay attention to Paragon, and I never knew if one was made for Paragon. And lo and behold, there is. So you can see Nerd Slayer Studios Death of a Game Paragon. Uh, I figured I would react to this. It's about 25 minutes long, so let's go ahead and dive into it. And um, yeah, I don't have a lot of context to Paragon, so it'll be interesting to see what all is said. So yeah, let's go in. All right. All these old animations are so cool. Is that grim.exe? Some games live and die by their promises of originality. While some make bold claims to revolutionize the entire yep. scope of games, others are content to give loud. their own unique spin on an existing genre and stake their success on gamers being drawn in by the novelty of their concept and execution. Enter Paragon, a third-person shooter MOBA hybrid developed by Epic Games. Paragon focused on making the multiplayer online battle arena genre or MOBA much more dynamic by infusing. I hope we get a lot more of this for Pred, shooter, like really good presentation for the game. Epic Zone Unreal Tournament. But Paragon never quite took off, failing to rise above the competition in a saturated MOBA market and True. eventually being decommissioned before it ever saw a full release. What went wrong with Paragon? How did a gorgeous, dynamic third-person take on the mobile world by an established developer fail to translate into a successful game? Come and join me on my journey as we investigate Epic Quality Games' like failed attempt at a mobile. Oddly weird. All right, death of a game, Paragon. Let's see how the uh, the investigative work was. The story of Paragon. It's a good series, by the way. Y'all should check it out. When longtime Epic Games developer Steve Superville convinced creative director John Wazelcheck to grant him the go-ahead to create a new game, okay. MOBA. Two years later, in November 2015, Paragon was teased for the first time. Epic Games had already established itself as a oh, that's the Gears of War shooters, introduction the screen. Oh my god, that was nostalgic for me. <laughs> the massively popular arena shooter Unreal Tournament. <laughs> And the more recently near Xbox exclusive <laughs> Gears of War franchise. My baby. So when Epic announced Paragon, a third person MOBA game, it caught some people off guard. But Steve Superville and Co. were confident they could create a MOBA different enough to be excited. Epic answered many questions about Paragon in an interview with GameSpot, where they stated they essentially had the license to create any sort of IP they wanted. That's pretty awesome. They chose to make a MOBA due to it being such a polarizing topic among people in the office. Epic also went on to say that Paragon would be unique because it would focus on some of the same aspects that Unreal Tournament did, namely verticality and the ability to traverse the sky. Paragon would also focus on being more third-person shooter-like in its gameplay, which would increase dynamism Whoa. and mobility in the gameplay, like but still arm have shield? the complexity necessary for a mobile cool. game. Everything would require aiming, including auto attacks. This has always been interesting to me. The idea of taking a comparatively sedentary format such as the MOBA genre or maybe even the RTS genre and attempting them in a 3D perspective, complete with fast-paced gameplay, gorgeous Dude, the fidelity that games using the Unreal Engine were known for, the concept on paper at least, was tantalizing. Epic promised Paragon would be playable a year later, launching in early access in March 2017. Followed by a public beta in August, Paragon but what had happened, early access bro? launch on March 18th, I mean, I where know it was happened. playable only by people who Mostly. purchased a founder pack. Paragon promised to be free to play come open beta, not unlike other MOBA That's games, kinda where which we're are at generally today. free to play with paid cosmetic options. Paragon's early access launch was successful. Players were enjoying the fast God, it's so ugly. combat, the ability to it's so incredibly ugly in the early. Hey, yo, that looked cool. In -depth map, <laughs> refreshing compared to other MOBAs, and found its card system unique, although the mechanic was still a work in progress. The card Yikes. system, in essence, was Paragon's different take on the traditional MOBA item shop, which is essentially every game Yikes. you start with no money, you proceed to no make good. more money by getting kills, assists, and also getting last hits on minions, and then you can purchase new items which give you buffs or even maybe unique abilities. 
Going through the story of Paragon, that would have been super hard for me to want to get into. Nothing of note seemed to suggest any changes or failures in the future. There wasn't much evidence to build a case yet. But then, thanks to a helpful Reddit thread, I discovered an important bit of news that happened just okay. a few years earlier. See, this is the stuff that in I want to get into. Things that are well researched. Owner of several free-to-play games purchased 48.4% of Epic Games, which gave them partial control over mm. Epic's board directors. After discovering this, I did not know this. It's quite obvious why Epic's next two games, Paragon and Fortnite, were free to play and focused on the now infamous live services <laughs> business model, which favored microtransactions over buy to play. Yes, this is true. Formats. Tencent confirmed this shift in Epic's direction in 2017. Tencent actually owns all about making that money, bro. online free to play titles, as I previously mentioned. You may have heard of one of them. I used to play the, the shit out of Arcade. This is the most popular MOBA game on the market and therefore Paragon's biggest competition. I have a feeling Tencent Old isn't Stone. going to allow Paragon to try and eclipse LOL so easily. It's counterproductive for them and serves as a strange conflict of interest. God, Greystone looks so Paragon's cool. early access release came the news of Epic hiring a man by the name of Donald Mustard. Donald Mustard was one of the brothers behind the mega success Infinity Blade, a mobile game published by Epic Games. Donald Mustard took a world creative producer position. This hiring makes sense given the context I just outlined. Bring in someone with experience monetizing on mobile platforms to run the creative team for your free to play title. Now there's an awful lot of conspiracy theories out there Wraith. about Donald Mustard. Some I know very little about this here. name, which we have to admit is a little bit ominous. People suspected he had some devious plan of slotting microtransactions into every one of Epic Games' releases, but I attribute that more to Tencent, who has a well-storied history of doing such. But I won't really entertain any of those theories in this video, as I didn't find enough evidence to support any claims. So no, Donald Mustard, besides the name, is not some super villain <laughs> who steered Paragon in the wrong direction. Donald Mustard's like a meme in Fortnite, too, kind of. Then make fun of him. Paragon rolled out its free-to-play open beta in August 2016. As players flooded Paragon servers, an issue with the game's design started to become apparent. Although fans enjoyed Paragon's map and early access, beta players had issues with it being too large. This manifested map in too games large. often oh my taking God. 40 to 50 minutes oh my to God. Finish, which was not something Epic Games was comfortable with. Oh my, oh my God. To combat this, Epic Games designed a traveling mode which allowed you to traverse the map quicker, but also leaving you more vulnerable while you were moving. I, I don't like that. In how I really don't like that. System, though, which allowed them to leapfrog in front of escaping players and catch them indefinitely. Epic Games was aware of this issue, but saw no easy immediate fix. What also became apparent was, although Paragon touted itself as a MOBA, it was more mechanically similar to that of a shooter. Because of this, I think it attracted an audience who wasn't already familiar with the MOBA style of game. But it's really I feel like, like we're a, seeing that a too. Match game. You know, everybody's just scrambling for kills and then I feel like we kills, see that a bit. It's kind of you just go for the objectives afterwards and that's really not how a MOBA is played. That's, a lack that's of probably just an issue with third person MOBAs, right? Like in the third person MOBA genre just isn't that much more super confusing. well flushed out Even outside of my concepts in MOBAs such as last hitting and boss fights weren't properly introduced to new players in Paragon. Combine these problems with a slew of new players and you had a significant population of gamers who were frustrated with Paragon's learning curve. This was not necessarily a fault of the game, but more of a lack of explanation. These issues were present but not absolutely debilitating. But I don't think many people expected what would come next. Oh, God. According to Steve Superville's LinkedIn profile, he stopped working on Paragon after its beta. I mean, he literally wrote that on his about blurb, which tells me he didn't exactly support the changes that came near the end of 2016. Inner However, turmoil. Apparently, Steve post Paragon's beta didn't immediately leave. He stayed on in some sort of perfunctory capacity and seemed to take a clear back seat near the end of 2016. It's strange that no press release occurred around this time. Clearly, Epic wanted everyone to keep thinking that everything was quite normal. It's odd for a game to lose the person who essentially created its very idea before the game is even finished. Steve didn't just leave the company, he slowly left the company and it was all kept hush-hush. 
Later on, however, That's you weird. may find that this makes some That's sort weird. of sense. Paragon continued to move on, despite its head figure possibly being sidelined. Paragon saw its first major changes in December 2016. What accompanied the new update, Monolith, was a map that was shrunk by 30%, as well as altered in a number of well, ways. That's good, I suppose. For example, jungling paths and other paths were removed or greatly altered. Keyword being simplified. It's understandable why Epic looked to shrink the map they wanted to really focus on shortening their match times. However, I think both simplifying and shrinking the map, they affected the flow of the game in a more negative way than intended. A game that was oh. originally targeting a more competitive audience had a major update that was found to be counterproductive of that goal. This is primarily because they increased character movement speeds as well as shrinking the map, which meant the already that was super map fast. seemed even smaller and more limited in pathing, further simplifying the game. With the Monolith update, it was clear that Epic Games was taking their third-person MOBA title and moving towards more of a shooter or arena-style game. Perhaps this was in hmm. part due Tencent now owning a large share of Epic Games. I highly doubt that Tencent would want another MOBA to compete with their League of Legends title. With the creator of See, Paragon, I didn't know Steve that Tencent Superville owned part of Epic or just hadn't thought about it. Role, it was clear that Paragon was intent on reaching a different audience than originally planned. And with every subsequent update, Paragon became less and less of a MOBA. And thus, less and less of Paragon. But the population numbers were good post <laughs> Oh no, it's According Iggy and Scorch. Games, by the start of 2017, Paragon had nearly 1 million players, up a few hundred thousand Yeah, from where but they is were that playing changes. or is that but like downloads? It's hard to say if that was because of the changes or a result of increased marketing or even just natural growth of sorts. Mm. Whatever the reason for the population increase, Epic saw enough reason to embark on this ambitious development of a new map. This typically takes a tremendous amount of time and resources. Resources, some would argue, were being spent on making the game less of what it was originally intended to be, a competitive third-person MOBA title. Definitely seems like they were having a hard time getting it where they wanted it, and then were unintentionally it's creating right like fragmented communities. That it seems that Steve Superville is no longer in the picture. In a weird behind closed door fashion, he exited the company. Perhaps he saw they no longer wanted to create the same game that he did, and realized it was time to go. I just find it so strange hmm. that there's next to nothing that details his leaving the company. I mean, come on. The guy was a little for weird. Epic Games for 15 years and not even a press release? We only know he left due to his LinkedIn profile or also his non-existent presence at the time. We also find out due to a press release later in the year that he joined another company. It's not the end of the world when a developer leaves a project and there are a multitude of reasons why they depart, but in Superville's case, he was the one who pushed to do a MOBA in the first place. That was his vision from the start. So when word finally spread of his departure, Paragon's players started to grow worried and even suspicious. The most skeptical gamers saw the game as becoming an Overwatch knockoff rather than a true MOBA, and Superville's exit only heightened these fears. Players were wondering, why did the lead developer on Paragon leave the company? And why was it so hush-hush? See, I haven't heard the thought of like it feeling more like an arena shooter or fighter fall, kind of a game as opposed to nearly a year feeling like no a MOBA. It definitely it seems like they were having a hard time game changes, with it. Hero tweaks, a card system rework, and much more. Epic Games was having trouble finding a model that worked. And thus, that, in August of right there, finding a model that worked. They implemented big changes to help combat the major complaints for the game. What? <laughs> Oh. Has been <laughs> what? Highlighted its poor matchmaking, lack of rank system, unbalanced Oof, card system, lack of rank system is not good. That the game was becoming more that will be a problem. And less competitive with each change. A new dawn update launched in August 2017. With the update came a new reworked card system, an increase in game speed card across system. the board, including auto attacks and movement speed. This went directly against community warnings that such changes would be harmful to Paragon. Although Epic Games had been quite talkative with their community and always have been, they had seemed to develop the habit of not listening to the players once they made up their mind on a change. Players railed against the new changes in droves as a once tactical and competitive Ooh, pay to game win now played like changes. a battle arena. 
where tactics were minimized. A higher attack speed meant giving more opportunities to players who had poor aim, ruining the overall flow of combat. The new card system even introduced cards that made auto attack. All of this just looks so messy to me. I don't. I have no interest in anything like that. Epic Games truly was hell bent on remaking Paragon, despite the community's wishes, and despite them saying they acknowledged what those community wishes were, they seemed to go against a lot of them. The Paragon community knew that the game had needed to be iterated on from the beginning, so it's not Those crowns are so cool, though. I will change, say that. But Epic Games' dedication to making the game more of an arena shooter perplexed its audience, an audience that, by most metrics, was primarily a MOBA audience. Paragon had been reduced to a game with a weak foundation and only a shell of its former complexity. To make matters worse, the gameplay changes came hand in hand with monetization in the form of loot packs. These purchases Yeah, loot boxes, man. It's always going to be a hard a hard game to win that. Which only had the chance to contain certain rare items. The yeah, never please. Please never loot boxes. Cards which directly contradicted Superville's initial promise to not make cards purchasable. This naturally caused a significant uproar in the already frustrated community. A Redditor I'm just waiting for him to talk about Fortnite. Gg, a third-party matchmaking tracker, and found that Paragon's population after the New Dawn update was at an all-time low, totaling fewer than 300,000 players, a far cry from its 800,000 player count earlier in the year. Damn, that's then crazy, Jay, though, because those numbers 18, are still so, like, Epic big Games to me. Epic <laughs> a statement stating that they were uncertain of Paragon's future. Epic essentially admitted that Fortnite, which had launched in early yep. access the previous year and had been a completely yep. unexpected mega success. No! Why? Because of this, they were pulling developers from Paragon to work on their new, more successful enterprise. Fortnite was a mega hit, becoming the most played game in the world. Yeah, so Epic it's definitely not just Fortnite that killed Paragon, that for sure. Things were slow for Paragon, not only because of this split development, but also because they were focusing on more long-term changes. This is somewhat of a mixed message, since they also admitted that Paragon was having trouble retaining new players, which we already knew at this point. Epic Games' statement came as a slap in the face to many of its remaining players of Paragon, as the community had been vocal in their concerns over the changes and resistant to many of them since day one. But no matter how frustrated players of Paragon were, they were now for the first time truly scared that perhaps Paragon wouldn't see it through the end of 2018. And those concerns were unfortunately confirmed. When on January 26, 2018, Epic announced that they would be shutting down Paragon Damn. in just three months, on April 26th. Feels Epic bad. The game seemed to realize they had screwed up, or at least they wanted to save face in the eyes of their fans because they offered full refunds for every purchase players made in the game, which we have to applaud. But what yeah, I that's want to crazy. dive in specifically is the actual statement Epic released detailing the news. In particular, I want to focus on the following quote. After careful consideration and many difficult internal debates, we feel there isn't a clear path for us to go Paragon into a MOBA that retains enough players to be sustainable. This Damn, quote had me like... scratching my head. What did they mean by grow Paragon into a MOBA? It started as a MOBA, and they hmm. grew it in the opposite direction. I just find it strange that they would imply something completely different here. As if Paragon was on its way to becoming... It just feels like... It, it literally feels like consistent change, creative differences, otherwise. right? And like uh, that line like hardship to... Gosling shouts at Rachel McAdams. What do you want? <laughs> it's not that simple. What, what do you, you want? want? <laughs> that scene perfectly encapsulates my feelings towards Epic Games. What did yeah, you want with Paragon? I think that that's think literally the thing. Like, they tried to address the, the, the player Super feedback, Bowl, the one that and they also tried to make a game so that was, like, was take, working for them Bowl financially, the like loot boxes, and they tried to, you know, mechanics. iterate on it, but it just wasn't working, the right? Like, it's just a game that wasn't going to work. morph into more of an action arena style game, which isn't the same as a MOBA. MOBAs are partially based on their heroes and the way they perform as a team, but they're also defined by the way the map is played. Yes. Jungling route, ganks, boss fights, buff steals, last hitting and item selection. These are things present in most MOBAs, if not all yeah, of them. These I aspects agree. offer different levels of depth to the game. On the surface, a MOBA seems simple enough. You just kill minions, collect gold, and then you realize you need to start last hitting, and last hitting's not easy when people are attacking you. You need to start pushing lanes, force uneven fights. These are the fun complexities of a MOBA. But Paragon, with every change, gradually lost almost all of Terra looks Paragon so cool. Paragon to contain less diversity, less skill-reliant aim-based gameplay, and more of a simple objective system with less variety. 
It's not very often you see a game lose more and more of its identity with each update so blatantly as in the case of Paragon. Yep, that's what happened. Cards and loot boxes, Another bro, thing, I don't know. Paragon suffered from something that manifested itself in nearly every iteration of the game was the card system. The problems arose when not every player was given every card. They had to be earned through progression. Now let me explain why this is so ludicrous. In every major MOBA game, there is an item shop where players can earn Yeah, you don't gold, have to buy them. game to amount to enough resources you just play to the game. items which impact your gameplay or stats in positive ways. In Paragon system, those items would be hidden behind a progression wall that took quite some time no, to progress. No, that's awful. That's After so the new bad. Dawn update, gems, which were basically the concept of runes in League of Legends, which allowed flat bonuses to characters available at level one, and cards became completely locked behind a slow and boring progression system called Hero Masteries. Essentially, you needed to buy a mastery of a certain hero. See, I like the, <laughs> I like the progression, it but you gotta find a better way to do it. To gain cards through progression without ever having to spend any money. But hey, the process was very, hey, very slow without mastery in certain. We'll have her characters. soon. This meant that the amount of grinding it took to gain cards in Paragon was immense, and the new Dawn update made it even worse. New players of Paragon often wondered, without spending real life cash, how can you reliably gain cards as a new player? This card system is just perplexing to me. It seemed to start with good intentions. They wanted to try something different, but then yeah. Epic realized that they could heavily monetize it. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes, dude. The progression system can make good business. As players will get it can more create a problem, sell a solution, right? Money, rather that's, than slog through that's a development tactic for sure. They can finally get the card that they want to use. But this practice also turns away new players, as most players have never experienced a MOBA in which the item shop is locked behind a progression wall. Yeah, that would be really terrible. Sense. Even Cam Winston, a lead developer at Epic, conceded that an item shop would be far more competitive and more fair. Like, why not just do an item shop? It's way more competitive, it's way more fair. There was no need <laughs> for Epic to try and reinvent the world. Oh, I really want to find that video and see where that conversation kept going. Be done with it. If you're looking for why new player retention in Paragon was so low, the card system is probably a good place to start. Yeah, it, too much progression is overwhelming and just like daunting. Unique instead of the traditional item shop, I just don't get the idea of locking part of it behind progression. This failure wasn't due to a lack of effort from Epic, as they certainly tried to redo the card system multiple times. But if you keep redoing something and it's still not working, it might yeah. just be best to just scrap it all together. Paragon, as announced early in 2018, was indeed shut down on April 26, 2018, only two years after it first had become playable, Damn. never making it out of open beta. Fans of the game were devastated. I've been there with they Infinite Crisis. Shout across all avenues of the internet that they appreciated the art team behind Paragon. Because if you haven't noticed so far, it was yeah. a gorgeous game. It's an amazing looking game. All Perhaps of the Epic old Christmas, stuff that Epic put out in terms events, of presentation Epic is amazing. Games released $12 million worth of Paragon assets for free to people using the Unreal Engine. This is a nice gesture from Epic, who despite their stubbornness during Paragon's development, did ultimately mean well no matter how misguided their choices were. But perhaps the story of Paragon doesn't end here. Another developer by the name of Visionary Games seems intent on keeping the dream of a 3D MOBA alive after Paragon's death. With the announcement of their project Phoenix Rising, which they consider a spiritual successor to Paragon, who cares? Intent on taking the good things that who Paragon cares? Did and we got predecessor! Vision ...of what such a game could be. This isn't just a small community project either. As the announcement article states, they boast a dev team of nearly 68 people. Visionary Games has also taken the time to show off their character models, gameplay engine, and art. They have made steady updates since announcing their project back in April 2018. Although this is interesting, so I'm, I'm excited to, to watch it. audience <laughs> interested in keeping the dream alive. I wish them the best, and I applaud them for taking a risk when given the opportunity. Yeah, we need some real good presentation for predecessor like this, you know. All these like animations are so nice. It is another story of developers being resistant to listening to their audience and of a game's identity being lost, ultimately resulting in its failure. It's also a bit of a strange occurrence to have a company like Tencent purchase stake in Epic, who is developing what is essentially direct competition to Tencent's flagship product which ultimately resulted in Paragon never being able to truly challenge LOL. There is some speculation on my part
cards here, but I definitely yeah. think it's something worth considering. It's a bit From of conjecture. Perspective, it makes sense that Tencent wouldn't want a game that they partly own to outshine one that they own in its entirety in League of Legends. The rocky history of Paragon is also the story of Fortnite. Yeah, it's so cool. Extent. We can't not talk about the elephant in the room. Yeah. Fortnite's monster success in the world of gaming can be directly attributed to the death of Paragon. It has when to one be. One of your games reaches the level but of not success only. that Fortnite has. Not entirely. Hit your wagon to it and let it take you as far as it possibly can. This means that you're more willing to put your other game, in this case, Paragon, to bed. I hope that we can see another 3D, more action-oriented MOBA game at some point. Predecessor! Something more dynamic than a game like Smite, even, but keeping the complexities of a 2D-styled MOBA. Who knows, though? Maybe Visionary will deliver, or maybe someone else will. One yep. thing's for sure, I eagerly await such a title. Thanks for watching, guys. Awesome, man. Well, there you have it, friends. My reaction to Nerd Slayer and his crew, his people, um, putting together the death of the game of Paragon. It is interesting. It is interesting because, like I said, I've definitely missed a lot of the context behind the the kind of like failing to address player concerns and then the like over monetization, the kind of like shady business, um, you know, with the card system, the, the, the steep progression for new players, like the retention was definitely struggling. The concerns with map and the game time and move speed and all that, you know, making big changes, you know, to bring out monolith, but then it being maybe too arcadey in a sense was, was not great. And then, you know, they, they had the loot box route, you know, they, they monetize. And, and I just think that they somewhere along the way, they, Internally, we're probably just struggling to keep the vision together, like, you know, keep a singular vision. And then as decisions were made, you know, people leave the company, people don't even like what they're working on anymore. The players don't like it anymore. And ultimately, when you get a game like Fortnite's success, you invest in it because look at Epic Games today. So friends, thank you so much for watching this video. Drop a like, comment, subscribe for future predecessor content. As always, be sure to become another. Tell someone you love them. And I'll see you in the next video.